Hello friends, so welcome to the communication part of the PLC programming user codices. So here I am talking about the Modbus communication. So Modbus is one of the oldest communication protocol developed for the PLC by the Modicon. Now it is owned by Schneider. So let's see how we can configure the Modbus in the codices and what all the different uh, implementation and the features we can have. So basically uh, when we are talking about the Modbus, Modbus is having master and slave and then we have the Modbus uh, RTU, TCP IP, so RTU is on RS485-232 and then TCP IP also protocol we have. It has a different uh, structure to send the request and read the response, so uh, that we will see. and. So there are different types like coil, disk input, input register, holding registers, and then we have the function code. So let's see how we define and configure the Modbus in codices. So as I told uh, Modbus, when we are talking, we will have Modbus master and Modbus slave. So that is why I have opened two projects. So one is the Raspberry Pi and another is the control win. So uh, Windows uh, similar, uh, PLC of the codices so we need to go to add device okay then we will select for the modbus com so first i'm explaining here how we can do for the using com port so rtu when we add modbus com then when we select we will see this com port modbus master we need to add for the master part so once we click there add device it will get added so let's wait for getting it added. So yeah, once it get added again, when we click on there, we don't have to close this pop up. Okay. So then we will add Modbus slave on that com port. Okay. So with, with slave, it has to communicate. Now uh, there will are some configuration which we need to do. So which is the COM port, which COM port we have to use, baud rate, parity, data bits and stop bits. So this should match uh, and this should be configured properly to match and communicate for the uh, slave with the slave. So we will select whether it will be RTO ASCII, what will the response timeout and auto restart communication. Sometime when we lose the communication, it will automatically restart the communication. We, it, we don't have to come and reset or do or all those things. So now go to Modbus slave. So here actually uh, we define uh, what is the slave address, what is the, on the response time. And then we have to add channel where we define different options. So uh, different kind of configuration. So here read calls, read disk input, read holding register, read input register. So there are multiple options. So read and write. Okay. So let's uh, select holding register. So we will configure for one holding register. Trigger type is cyclic. So we and then we have to define the length and the offset address. Okay. So when we click OK, then this channel will get added. Let's configure another channel to write the multiple register. So we will see how we can read and write both. Okay. Now uh, let's configure one input register where we will be only reading the data. Okay. So not writing anything, but only the reading part. Okay. After we configure the channel, then we have we will get this I/O mapping. So here we have the addresses. By default, it will be in the Word format. Okay, in the array format, array of Word. So we can go and still define our data set here, so data variable with that address also. So we are defining the variables for the particular address with the word. Okay. So once we have configured for the Modbus master let's go to configure the slave device so here also the same procedure will go modbus com we have to add first once this get added the modbus com 
uh, let's see here yes so modbus com got added now we have to add modbus serial device okay so once we added the modbus serial device here uh, we have to now provide the details here also what will be the unit id and slave id what is the number of holding register we want to expose what is the input register we want to expose whether it will be writable or not so when we check that box writable the it will be read and write both okay now once we define here then we will get the io mapping also so the io mapping here again it will be in the form of word array of word we have the address defined now either we can use the same address or we can utilize this address in defining it at a another variable so if you see i have defined that for r data and uh, w data so read data and write data because qw is for write or even we can go so here and assign the variable directly on this so there are different options to assign the data okay so m data i am assigning for the holding register and for the input register i am assigning another variable m data one okay so as these variables got assigned now let's me start the plc once the plc will get started we will download the code so for that let me so here if you see we also have to configure all the same parameters uh, which is configured in the slave device so everything is configured here okay so let's uh, now download this program okay into the plc so let me download this So it is downloaded and it is still in stop mode let's uh, also so let me download uh, into the raspberry pi also so let's log in so log in means uh, to log in means it will be downloading so we will click on yes and then it will get downloaded on the raspberry pi also So once it will get downloaded, we will see whether it communicates or not. We have configured all the parameter correctly, I believe. So let us see uh, how exactly it works. So let's start both the PLCs, means one PLC and another on the Raspberry Pi. So it is in run mode. Let's start. So this is the setup. If you see, uh, this is the setup. I have a chipset. Uh, which is connecting from the laptop to the but uh, what I'm seeing here it is not communicating okay so why it is uh, not communicating let's check it out let's go offline here and see what is the com port assigned to this uh, device the chipset which it, if it is not com port one then okay so it is com 8 so this is the point where we have to take care uh, so all these parameters are very important we have to match and then when we select the com port 8 and these are the basic uh, uh, debugging part and the uh, sometimes we miss this configuration and then the communication doesn't happen so we need to always synchronize this thing so let's now go into the run mode and let's see if device is communicating or not if you see the device is communicating and even in the video with the raspberry pi the chipset which i have connected is blinking so 
it is showing that the device is now connected so this is the basic setup which we can do between two devices over the modbus rtu now let's uh, change some value and send some value from uh, one to another so this is my serial device i will send the data from the serial device to modbus master So let's check. Okay, so let's check the data here. Okay, so we got the data. So once we push the data, it is coming into the M data one, which is configured for the input register. And the data which let's change uh, the values and we push so it, you are seeing that it is getting updated on the uh, another device so and uh, for the holding register when we let's uh, change the value here so same thing is getting updated on the holding register part which is the uh, which we are writing from the second device to the serial device so this is uh, how exactly the Modbus communication work in the codices. Uh, this is how we can configure. So for the writing, we can have the cyclic, we can have the trigger. So mostly we should use trigger that with every trigger only the, uh, the values get written. So yeah, this is pretty much on the Modbus RTU side. So let's go to uh, another Modbus a protocol which is modbus over tcp ip how we can configure it so working wise both are almost configuration wise both are almost same so we have to go to again to uh, uh, add the modbus but we for that we have to add it over ethernet so not the modbus com but we have to add it over ethernet adapter okay so because it is tcp ip so let's add ethernet first when we click on the ethernet then the modbus option will come so we have ethernet ip profinet io and modbus so we will select modbus tcp master And then when we click, we have to select Modbus TCP slave. So, okay. So now we have to define here the IP, uh, the port with which this particular Ethernet will connect. So as I'm connecting to the Wi-Fi so let me select the Wi-Fi port and it is configured let's go to uh, configure the Modbus TCP slave so we have to give the slave slave IP address okay okay so I'm giving right now 111 then we have to add the channel same way as we were doing for the com rtu part length again let me define here also 2 and then we will go for the so here you can see all the different configuration whatever we had set the value so here it will come okay we can also see everything in this particular tab of the modbus tcp slave okay so let's go and do the io mapping so as you see this is percentage iw 
zero has been get added so this uh, particular i address we can call directly in the program also so this is another way of calling or instancing that particular variable with the address let's uh, download it So once it get downloaded, okay, let's go in the run mode and uh, where is the device? So if, okay, so right now it is not communicating because uh, we don't have any, uh, any device which is exposing the tags on the mod bus. So let me open one simulator. So this is uh, Modbus simulator. So let me check. Select Modbus TCP IP. Okay. And let's. So if we see whether it is communicating or not, not yet. So why it is not communicating? Okay. We will change the IP address to 184 because it is also running on the same machine okay so so we need to provide basically with which slave ip address it has to connect so let's download again and let's see whether it get communicated or not Okay, put in the run mode and it start communicating. So let's check it out by changing the values. So percentage IW, right now the value is zero for the IW zero. IW one is not used anywhere in the program, so it will be grayed out and it is not having. So we, if we have to use IW one also, then we have to again go and call the percentage IW one also in the main program or any program which is getting executed okay so let me download again log in with online download now once it get downloaded and then uh, we will change the value and see whether all the changes are getting reflected or not. So, okay. So IW0 and IW1 both are now 0. Okay. And if we go and change the value here. So let's change. Values are getting changed updated in the PLC over the Marvel Master. So this is uh, how we do over the TCP IP. Let's uh, okay. So if we change it from here, whether it will right no, because we have only read the holding register. So we are not, we don't have to write the option. So we will be only reading when it is getting written from a other device or a slave device. Okay, let's uh, let's do another configuration. Okay, so uh, okay, we have uh, not done uh, the right part, correct? So let's uh, uh, add a channel where we will read and write the holding register uh, before going to another configuration. So let's uh, first do that, and we'll see how exactly it behaves. So read and write multiple register function code 23 so we will give you the offset so address and same address we will give for the write register okay 
okay and now we will define uh, the mapping so as we do so we have iw2 and qw0 okay so let's uh, call these two addresses also into the plc program so that it is getting utilized because if we don't call then it will not get utilized and it will not show any value so this those channels are not used that is how exactly it get does in the codices so let's uh, download and uh, once it get downloaded then we will check it with the uh, same simulator uh, to write the value and read the value okay so it is downloaded uh, let's put into the run mode and then let's check it out so uh, let's send some value from here qw0 we will write 9 and send should come into the iw2 so yeah so i'm writing and then i'm reading and then here at the address 3 it should also reflect so this is uh, how the read and write functionality will work okay so what configuration we have to do that is how it will be done so now uh, let's can do the configuration under so on add device we will go to slave device so when we are configuring it as a slave device so we will add the modbus slave device here So let me add this device here. Okay. So add the mapping will get done. Then uh, that's all. So this is what we have to add. We will close it and we will configure this slave device itself. Okay. So we will again we have to define here uh, what so serial gateway which com port if we have to use serial gateway okay otherwise uh, we will define the io mapping for holding register and the input register because by default that is what is configured if you go to the general then we will see that uh, this holding and input registers are configured so let's uh, so we have find your iw3 and qw1 okay so let's call these two addresses also oh, okay so instead of call so we have seen that by calling the address directly we can do so let me give another way also so by using creating a variable and then calling there so our read data and it is at percentage i w3 So our data at percentage IW3. So here what we did is we mapped this variable to the particular address directly like this. Uh, no. So no, I did uh, a long assignment. So here we have to put. Okay. So. same thing we will do for out okay so which w type data at qw1 i believe so iw3 and qw1 
so that is what the address is given so let's download it mm, we have not called this okay let's download it and we will see because we have not called this r data and w data in the program but we have mapped it with the address so i think it should work otherwise normally we need to call those variables into the program part not only in the definition of variable but as we have given addresses so it should it should work okay so let's put in those run mode so okay it is not communicating why it is not communicating let's go to the configurations and uh, let's see where we have done some wrong configuration okay if the, nothing is here let's go to general and we'll see uh, okay uh, here everything is okay we are not using gateway so do we have to insert any device so see these are the things which we need to check so let's uh, go to okay we will try download okay it is not still communicating why it is not communicating we need to find this out mm. so we will go to the tcp port status and it is showing error address in use the provided address is already in use so is it this address we are talking i w or w data we let me call it here and compile it so let's wait for the full compilation whether any error we get what exactly this error means so when we troubleshoot only then we will come to know exactly what is the the problem okay so in the communication these are the basic things which we need to always take care uh, why it is not communicating whether we have done anything wrong in the configuration mostly it will be part of the configuration and we need to understand the error codes so if you go again back to here okay error code is 519 and what exactly it is showing here we will not get anything status error address in use and it is saying the provided address is already in use it is for tcp port status so let's go to the port serial port so we have given 502 and if you see the modbus tcp master is already connected to 502 port so we will change the slave port to 503 and then let's check whether it work or not so we need to understand the error code what exactly it is trying to say where exactly it is pointing out sometime it get we get misleaded and so i was just trying to showcase how we can debug the different scenarios also and what are the things we need to take so very basic uh, things which we need to do okay so still it is uh, not communicating but port status changed to okay okay now let's go to because it is a slave device correct so now we need to have master which will be connecting with it so let me open this modbus pole connect and our modbus tcp ip we should give the ip address 184 and the port number 
to 503 and say ok and it is connection timeout ok so these are not 3 it is 10.184 ok so now if you see it is connected and uh, let's send the data so everything is all okay here let's check out the different data set so i'm just putting some random values and sending it to the modbus master from the slave device now we will go to master we will say read read write register or we will have read ok so here we will give read holding register address from which address we have to read what is the slave id and number of parameter once we say apply it will it is not because what is our configuration there is input register so it is coming for the input register so that this also we need to keep in mind when we are configuring it multiple parameters whether it is coming into input register or the holding register now uh, let's do for write multiple register apply and then send some value from here then it should get reflected in the read part of the in the holding register basically you see in the holding register all those values are getting reflected so yeah so this is uh, how actually we can do so when we are connecting with uh, on the local computer then yeah this happens and all the simulators we can use but again when we are connecting to a remote device then we have to also take care of the ip address the baud rate the parities the data bits so all those things we need to actually read and go through the manuals what exactly the configuration has been asked and we have to set it then uh, it will be it will start communicating yeah so these are all the configuration which we need to do the modbus configuration and this is all for this video thanks for watching that's all for this video uh, see you in the next one